fresh face to this open mic at least, Mr. Corbin Owlball, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to open this the same way I opened my last Tinder date. I haven't done this in two years. <laughs> so when this goes off the rails, do not be surprised. <laughs> I had a set list to go up here. I'm leaving it on the table. We're just going to play some jazz. How's everyone doing right now? Are we all doing well? Yeah! That's good. I'm so glad to see everybody out here. I'm uh, celebrating going out and seeing people again. I recently turned 30. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. It's a really common thing a lot of people go through in their lives. Um, I turned 30, which means I'm now at the point in my life where half of my friends have kids and the other half have DUIs. The ones who are going to the high school have both. I am neither. I'm in the slim minority. If I had to choose between the two, I would choose the child, not because I want to have kids, but you can't just leave a DUI in the woods and wait for nature to take its course. Can we agree? Can we agree? Some people don't agree, but that's okay. So I'm here visiting. I used to live here. Uh, I moved to Colorado, the mediocre white man capital of the world. Um, been there for a few years. If you're from there, I'm sorry. Um, but I'm here on an important mission. I'm here to pitch a new show to some executives at Netflix. The show is called Guy Fieri Eats Your Food. The premise is very simple. This is the, the vision I have for the pilot. You have your standard nuclear American family. They're preparing a beautiful home-cooked meal. They're doing the camera pan montage of the chopping up the ingredients. They're sitting down to the meal and they're all excited about it. And then suddenly, flashbang grenades go off and a SWAT team bursts in and the family is forcibly restrained as Guy Fieri comes in and wordlessly devours their entire meal right in front of them. The family is resisted by the security team and then afterwards Guy gives a nice interview talking about the things he loved the most about their meal and the family is never seen again. I think it's going to be a real winner. So I'm still at the point in my life where I'm very depressed that you do not actually sweat Gatorade when you play sports. I don't know if anyone else feels that way. That was a thought I had a lot when I was a kid. I had a lot of misconceptions when I was a kid. I thought that if I played soccer hard enough, I would ooze red all out. Red, because red is my favorite color. You different colors for other people. It doesn't matter. I thought that I would bleed Gatorade with how hard I played my sports. That's what I thought. I thought that I would bleed Gatorade. I thought that my head would turn into a giant fruit if I ate gushers. <laughs> was very traumatizing for me. I thought that daylight savings time meant that we were actually running out of daylight. And I thought that one day my dad would have time to take me fishing. Anyway. You guys want to hear a millennial joke? Being able to retire. Do you guys want to hear an actual millennial joke? Yeah. There we go. I know you're already warmed up to me. So I think there are two kinds of millennials. The kind that admit that they had a MySpace. And fucking liars. Admitting it is the first step. So I know I'm a millennial because I went through some financial issues. I'm sure we've all been there at some point. I had my identity stolen a few years ago. They gave it back. I woke with it, woke up, there was a nice little cardboard box and a note on it, handwritten. It said, I'm sorry, we had no idea. Here's a $10 gift card to Target. Buy yourself something mediocre. It was great. They named me 30 under 30 under 30K. I really like that. It's because I'm not very financially literate. I don't understand things like credit scores. Does anyone actually understand why you have to go into debt to prove that you're good with money? <laughs> it's like if you went into the doctor for the first time and they're like, yeah, we don't really know if you can be healthy or not, so we put this tumor into you. <laughs> We're going to 
we'll see how long it takes that tumor to go away. <laughs> and then maybe we'll treat your ass. That'll be ten thousand dollars, please. My drug dealer, I mean my doctor, loves that joke. Because some drug doctors are just drug dealers in lab coats, can we agree? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I know I'm among friends. I went in a few years ago I nearly took my pinky off with a jigsaw on April Fool's Day. It's not a joke, that's a real thing that happened. <laughs> April Fool's Day is the worst time to injure yourself, also, because nobody believes you. So I drove myself to the emergency room, and they stitched me up, and the doctor says, Do you want something for the pain? And I go, No, I got this far. I think I'm okay, dude. He goes, I think you're gonna want something for the pain. <laughs> I'm like, are you sure you think we're in the right place, bud? This isn't behind a subway, for the record. I'm used to these conversations, just not in this office setting, in these clothes. But I said no, I listened to the after school specials. Okay, I'm a smart person. I'm a smart person because I learned a lot of important lessons at a young age. I'm going to tell you guys a story about something that happened to me when I was very young. It informed a lot of my feelings on life, morality, God. We're going to talk about God a little bit in this holy comedy space. <laughs> when I was five years old, I went to the supermarket with my mom. Very wholesome activity, I know. And when we were at the supermarket, I saw that there was an open barrel of walnuts. And two thoughts went through my mind. Number one, I've never had a walnut before. <laughs> Innocent thought. Second thought, more importantly, I've never stolen anything before. <laughs> so I did what any sneaky, sneaky five-year-old would do. I got on up to the barrel of walnuts, and I took one, and I put it in my pocket, and I went out the front door with my mom. It was the perfect crime. I got away with it. It was awesome. So I'm sitting in the front seat with my mom, and I pull the walnut out of my pocket to inspect my trophy. And my mom looks at it and she goes, did you steal that walnut? <laughs> and I go, yeah. Because I'm an honest thief. And she says, and this is a direct quote, God is going to punish you for stealing that walnut. <laughs> Very important thing to say to a young developing child. So I said, whatever, and I opened up the walnut, and I threw it in my mouth, and I discovered I am allergic to tree nuts. <laughs> Surprise! And that is, that is how I learned that stealing is wrong. Thank you very much.